It could be that um, people of Muslim origin who go to the gym to work out and wear jewellery might not be fundamentalist believers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. talk a little about what happened uh, at Yale because you, you uh, recently spoke at Yale University. Now, Yale University Press, a major serious academic publisher, is publishing a book about what happened with the cartoons. Yeah. But they're refusing to print, to reproduce a picture of the cartoon. Is this right? Yeah. What's, it's like saying a biography of Napoleon, but we mustn't put a picture of Napoleon in it. How can they, in fact, it's, it's more so, how, how can they not put a picture of the, you know, let, let's break here, actually, because I want people to think about that for a few moments. So, Yale University, Ivy League, one of the most respected universities in the world, uh, producing a book about the cartoons. They don't have to produce the book, but it, they're producing a book about the cartoons, but the, 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 the most well-known, the most provocative, allegedly, of the cartoons will not be in the book. You think that was an editorial decision or was it an act of cowardice? We'll, we'll find out when we come back on The Michael Corrin Show. We'll see you. So... Um, I'm sure you've been watching the whole show, but in, in case you haven't, let's re reintroduce who we have here because it is uh, quite a coup for us, an exclusive interview uh, with uh, Kurt Vestergaard, the cartoonist, the most well-known, famous, infamous, provocative, notorious, whatever, uh, cartoon of those of Muhammad, the one with uh, Muhammad, his, his turban is uh, a, a bomb, and also Lars Hedegaard, who's president of the International Free Press Society, Freedom uh, of the Press. Yale University Press, a book about the cartoons, uh, but no picture of the cartoons. So there, there are no pictures at all in the book? <laughs> That's very strange. But we have seen this situation before, you know, we have seen in... Uh, in Europe that uh, exhibitions with uh, uh, topics uh, of religious character, special Muslim character, has been, has been closed. And um, yes, and of course there's... Uh, and and uh, um, Gerd Wilders, he was, he was uh, denied access to, to Great Britain. Yes. That allowed in various in Muslim Be in leaders. Berlin they they uh, closed an opera um, because there was some in the set there were uh, figures of uh, the great religious figures uh, Jesus, Muhammad, yeah. and so on. And that is that is very very sad. I think I, I I don't like to think about that. Well, the opera was in, it was not anti-Muslim, it was the, no, just no. a depiction. No, no. And we should add, and Muslim scholars, I'm sure, would support this in this, that certainly Persia and elsewhere, there were depictions of the Prophet Muhammad. But even if there weren't, uh, we live in a, uh, supposed to live in a free society. You mentioned Gert, Gert Wilders, the political leader from Europe, from the Netherlands, um, not being allowed into Great Britain, but Britain did allow in. Uh, at least two major Islamic leaders yeah. who had called for the killing of homosexuals and apostates and uh, so a little bit of a double stand. W has Yale, Yale University Press, I mean I assume you were interviewed for the book by mm -hmm. the author? Uh, uh, no, not, not No, he didn't book. interview? No. Was she, you the class? Yes. yes? Yeah. No, she didn't only interview you. No. No. no, no. Really? No. She interviewed uh, Fleming Rose, who was the uh, editor, who was... Uh, yeah. oh, I see. Well, well, what did Yale, have they said any? I mean, if they're willing to come forward and say, you know what, we're terrified. If we do this, we're going to have to have security around the building and, and we're frightened and it's not worth the bother. Uh, they said that, at least I'd admire their honesty, if not their, their, their cowardice. Mm -hmm. But have they given any explanation as to why they won't put pictures of the cartoon in a book about the cartoon? There have been various explanations, but uh, none of them believable, <laughs> I, I think. There was a... a very interesting uh, article in uh, the New Criterion, do you know that? Uh, yes, that? yes. Yeah, uh, the lead article, as a matter of fact, speculating as to the, their motivation. Um, it's not very, very believable. Uh, well, that's a conservative some, arts magazine. Yeah, there seems to be some, perhaps some Arab money involved uh, that uh, Yale is perhaps trying to attract some Saudi financing or, or something like that. So. Uh, it would be an inducement not not to offend uh, unnecessarily, but I don't know. I don't I don't find very uh, any of this very convincing, and I can't see any reason if they don't if they no, do not dare to to show the, uh, the, the perhaps the most important picture of our time, certainly the most talked about picture of our yes. time. Why do the book? Well, I, I'm sure you, I mean, you you know far more about this than I do. But the New York Times refused to run the picture, saying it would offend 
Islamic sensibilities and we can mm -hmm. convey the picture without showing it. And a few days later had a picture of uh, the Virgin Mary soaked in bodily waste, in excrement. Right. Uh, suddenly they'd lost their ability to convey the meaning of a picture. Uh, mm -hmm. It's absolute cowardice and hypocrisy. We, we know this time and time again. We have public funding in this country for galleries mm -hmm. where there are, again, attacks on Christianity that are quite vile. They have, I don't think they should be publicly funded, mm -hmm. but they have the right to do it. But mm -hmm. they wouldn't dream. I mean, they wouldn't dream of in any way, even in a positive light, displaying something about Islam that might cause some offence. You know, the interesting thing is that it did not used to be that way. It used to be the way that... Um, Outside of the uh, of the uh, the realm of Islam, the so-called Dar al Islam, yeah. people could do anything they wanted because it did not this did not concern Muslims, because this was outside of their purview. Mm. Um, so um, there have been far worse depictions of uh, the Prophet in in European history, far worse than, than the one uh, Curtis done. Yes. Nobody did anything. So. Uh, the, the implication of what has happened now with, with uh, the protests and the demands uh, that, we, that we change our laws is, is, uh, uh, seems to amount to a claim that the Sharia has now been introduced as de facto law in, in, Europe, the, West. in the West. This is, of course, uh, Professor Bernard Lewis's uh, interpretation. Yes, leading uh, also uh, Arabic of, Also of, uh, of Princeton, Princeton University. And I think he's absolutely right. Uh, the reaction shows that they now think that we are under the iron heel of, of, uh, of Islam. We have 90 seconds left of the show. What would you, we, we have a lot of people watching, many of them would, would, would be Muslim, good people. What would you say to them? Well, I would say that uh, for us Danes, it's very important to, it's a, it's a, to keep up with this uh, freedom of speech and all the other democratic... Uh, uh, freedom traditions. I think our situation as a very democratic and uh, a very democratic country has, uh, because of we have uh, always protected these uh, a very uh, a very dynamic factor as freedom of speech in our society. It has meant really a lot for the Danish development. Yes. Mm. But now I think that we perhaps have lost our international innocence. We have, um, we have left the appeasement policy, which has been very typical for, Danish and for Denmark in many, situation, mm. in many situations. We have left it behind. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you so very much indeed. Uh, tomorrow, our, what was it, this week panel, Ezra Levant will be on that uh, and other people too. Until then, take care, God bless and uh, goodbye. Michael Torrin's wardrobe supplied by Stollery's, serving Canada's business community for over 100 years. Stollery's at Bloor & Young.